Hello YouTube, this is Enrico De Pauli with another Mix Secrets TV episode. Tonight I'm gonna talk about plugin tips and I'm gonna show you a really cool uh, plugin I'm using um, in a session of a song I'm working. <clears throat> this is a song of mine and I'm working this really cool uh, with this really cool plugin plug by Brainworks Plugin Alliance called the uh, Control V2. It's a really simple uh, plugin, but like mostly uh, every uh, Brainworks plugin, it works in mid-side. What mid-side is, stereo um, works in two channels, right? Uh, every stereo um, signal carries two channels, one being the left side, the other one being the right side. What mid-side is, is also, uh, unlike, uh, it's also two channels like stereo, but instead of carrying the left side in one channel and the right side in another channel, what mid-side does, it carries in one channel everything that, that is in mono, everything that sits in the exact center of your mix, dead center. And the other channel of the mid-side carries anything that's not dead, cent dead center, anything that's different between one side and the other, that's not exactly alike, will be in the uh, side channel. So we have the mid-channel and the side channel. That's why it's called mid-side. And what's really cool about this company, Brainworks, is that most of their plugins uh, processes audio in mid-side. And what is the exact advantage of that? Well, uh, quite a few. Not only advantages, but it's uh, it's pretty unique things you can do with uh, in mid-side. Like, uh, for instance, if you raise uh, the level of the of the side, you have an impression of a wider mix because, in relation to to the center your, your uh, side will be louder and you're gonna have an impression of a louder mix. Um, the way mid-side works, um, you, could, you could process things in mid-side without this plugin, but it would, it would be a major hassle because you would have to encode uh, via a matrix. You'd have to, to, to make quite a few auxiliary channels in your Pro Tools and encode one auxiliary channel being Everything that's in the center uh, being left plus right. Um, another uh, channel being the left side would be uh, left minus right. And, and another channel being the right side being um, right minus left. So you'd have to have like a, a, a three channel matrix of encoding until you could actually process things. And then you'd have to decode those channels, that, that, the, the, the mid-side channel back to stereo. We don't need to do that. Uh, Brainworks Control V2 will do that for us in a flip of a, of a switch, which is the cool thing. So let's uh, dive into the plugin. Here it is. Now it's a really simple interface. The plugin itself does very little um, processing. What it does here, you have uh, you select what the input uh, format is. If you are inputting actually left and right stereo uh, signal, or if the signal is already being fed into into the plugin in mid side, uh, encoded in mid side, which most of the times will not be, and I'm gonna show that to you uh, as we go. And then you have the second switch here, being what the the plugin will will what signal will come out of the plugin when, when the signal actually exits the plugin. So you can select if, if the signal comes in uh, in stereo or in mid-side, and you can select if the signal goes out in stereo or in mid-side. Over here, you can flip the left and the right sides. So you can invert, uh, left swap left to right and right to left. Over here, you can phase flip uh, the left channel and the right channel. Over here you can solo, you can solo the left channel, you can solo the right channel, you can solo the mono, and you can solo the sides. 
Over here you have a balance, which is um, uh, the, the balance between the left side and the, and the right side, you know, not to be mixed up with, with pan. You know, pan is when you have a mono uh, a signal being fed e to either side of the, of the stereo bus. Balance is, is when you already have a stereo signal and you're just balancing out, you know, more left side, more right side. That's the balance control. And then over here, we have a, a, a panning of the, uh, of the side. This is really cool. This controls the panning of the side channel and this controls the panning of the mono, uh, the mid channel, when in mid side. Um, not when in mid side, the plugin already works in mid side, but this controls the signal in mid side processing. Here we have a mono maker, which is really cool. You can tell you can you can actually uh, tell the plugin to to make everything mono below a certain frequency. Pretty useful for clubs, you know. So any any um, low frequencies you have panned to one side or to the other will be centered dead on. So you have more energy being fed to all uh, low frequency speakers in a club or or mastering for vinyl, you know, which is a pretty big requirement having um, uh, mono low frequency. Otherwise, these stylus would, you know, jump out of the groove. Going back to the plugin here, we have, a, you know, the most used and most useful uh, control, which is the stereo width. The stereo width will, when you raise it, it will balance more uh, gain of the of the of the side channel as opposed to, to less gain in the mid channel and if you if you bring that to 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 the to the to the left uh, anti-clockwise um, uh, position it will just you know make the, the signal more mono it will make the mono uh, uh, channel louder and the, the side channel lower and over here we have a metering in uh, RMS, in peak, and a uh, dynamic uh, range meter. And here we have um, correlation meter over down here. And here we have a phasing, uh, a balance, and a correlation meter. Phasing, correlation, and then a balance meter. Well, let's um, let's hear what this plugin can do to our music. So. I'm going to play the music with the plugin in, in the full uh, configuration. And then um, I'm going to raise, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solo uh, mono and, and, and side and left and right so you can hear it. I advise you to uh, take a listen to what we're doing either in your studio speakers on or on headphones so you can really perceive what we are. Uh, we want to accomplish here. So let's go. So I just soloed uh, mono and side. I'm gonna play again. This is just the side channel. We, we are hearing nothing that sits in the dead center. And this is the mono uh, solo. Here we can solo left and right in stereo uh, mode okay now we have an idea of um, how our program our music sounds in uh, mono only uh, not in mono only I'm not making the, the, the signal mono I'm soloing you know the mono information and the side information and now I can play with the stereo width so we can uh, we can have that idea of 
we can have we, we can perceive the the sound being you know open wider than the it actually is let's go It's pretty obvious what it does to the sound, you know. Every time we uh, hear those mixes that you know have a pretty big, wide sound, they're very likely using some kind of plug-in to some kind of processor to widen the stereo field, and this is the purest way to do this. Now, um, I'm gonna play with the balance so we can hear, you know, uh, just. A classic receiver uh, 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 type balance between stereo. Let's take a listen. Now I'm gonna play with this, which is really cool for when you have a mix that, you know, um, the energy in the left and right is pretty much correct, but your vocal or some kind of element that should be dead center isn't you know here we can pan the mono information only without affecting the side let's take a listen to this it was pretty clear that you know the kick and snare were being panned across left and right, but the uh, stereo information was was uh, left alone. This is very useful too. And here is the opposite. We can pan the side only without affecting uh, the mono. This is useful for, let's say, when you have a mix, you're mastering a mix, or even you, you have a mix that for some reason uh, the vocal is in the center as it should be, but for some reason your stereo uh, channels are a little bit off. You want to make them, you, you want to balance the stereo without um, changing what's in the center. And this is what this control can do for us. <music> So this is obviously less um, less uh, easy to uh, not as easy to perceive because um, it's not like a mono vocal or kick and snare that's you know we are panning across the stereo field. We are just you know moving the uh, stereo information from one side to the other while uh, maintaining the center information in the dead center. That's why we perceive this a little less. And uh, this is the mono maker. It's not as easy to perceive, but I'm going to give it a shot. So, you know, try to focus um, in the uh, low end uh, side, the low end spectrum. And uh, that's going to be all dead to mono, dead center. <music> Again, usually you won't use this at very high settings. You just want to keep your uh, low frequencies, you know, steer to uh, to the center, so you don't have only one side of the speaker trying to reproduce, you know, a big sound wave of a very low frequency. You want to have both speakers doing that, or for mastering for uh, vinyl, as I said. Well. I think using the stereo width in this track 
helped a lot, um, you know, bringing the, the, my, my music a little wider. But I'm going to show you something even cooler now. Um, I'm going to open this plugin here in the top. I'm going to remove bypass. And I'm going to make sure the input is set to stereo and the output is set to mid side. So the audio coming from here in stereo obviously will enter the plugin in stereo and the plugin now it's uh, sending audio out of it in uh, in mid side. So whatever is in the left uh, channel, it's not left side anymore, is center, and whatever is in the right channel is not right channel anymore, is sides, mid and side. So since the plugin is um, is um, exiting audio in mid side configuration, the next plugin I'm opening here is also uh, by Plugin Alliance, an SPL um, transient designer. And what uh, this will allow us to do is I open this plugin in dual mono, so I have a control over the left and the right side separately. And I'm gonna enable, bypass is off now. And what I'm gonna do is, well, it's important to say that if the next plugin is off and we are encoding this the sound here from stereo to mid side, if we take a listen now, it's going to sound really odd because on your left uh, ear, you're going to hear everything that should be mono in the center. And on your right ear, you will hear everything that should be uh, the side uh, channel because we're not decoding this. I'm just going to play so you can hear what an undecoded mid-side uh, signal sounds like. There you go. So you had, you know, an undecoded uh, mid-side signal, which is center in the first uh, channel and sides in the, in the other channel. So in order for us to uh, be able to hear the stereo signal again, we need to decode the uh, mid-side signal back to stereo. So the first pl plugin we have was encoding, is encoding, is receiving signal in stereo and uh, outputting signal in mid-side. And uh, the reason we are doing this is so that we can add Another plugin in dual mono, and um, it's going to be this SPL um, transient designer. So we can process the uh, mid signal and the, the and the side signal separately. But then we're going to need another instance of the uh, control V2, so it can receive signal in mid side which it, it it was encoded from stereo to mid side in the first instance of this plugin and then we need to decode it back from mid side back to stereo so uh i'm gonna bypass this last plugin here and um i'm gonna play again so you can hear the uh what we just heard you know the uh the mid-side sound let's go okay as soon as i enable this receiving sound in mid-side and, and and outputting sound in stereo we're gonna have the sound decoded back to stereo let's check it out Excellent. So now we are able to insert a plugin which I already have open here. Uh, it's in bypass and it's in dual mono, so I can process left and right separately. Whereas left will be my 
mid information and right will be my side information. So what this allows me to do, which is pretty cool, is uh, to play, you know, this is a transient designer by Plugin Alliance also um, in SPL. And um, it, it uh, tailors, it controls the uh, envelope of the attack and the sustain of the sound. So you can bring the attack definition more to your face or you can hide the attack uh, further back, further behind. Or it can bring the sustain a little more present or it can make the sound a little less sustained. Pretty cool uh, and very easy to use, fast to use a plugin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the left side. And I'm going to play with the attack. I'm going to add and I'm going to cut, cut back the attack. And then I'm going to do the same with the sustain. Um, and it's going to affect only the left channel, which is taking care of the uh, mid information. So please focus your hearing to the um, mainly kick and snare and bass, you know. Uh, mainly kick and snare, because that's where we're gonna really perceive the uh, the attack uh, popping a little more or a little less. So okay, let's go. Okay, this was very, very obvious um, that the center information, the mid information when I was playing with the attack was just popping more to my face or just uh, uh, hiding further behind, you know, especially when I was uh, uh, playing with the sustain knob, uh, we could definitely hear, you know, the sound inflating more, all the mid information inflating more or just going further back, leaving only the transients a little more um, uh, catching, you know, uh, attracting more attention. Now I'm going to do the same with the right side, which is affecting only the side information, the side uh, signal, which is the stereo uh, stuff playing. Anything beside, uh, anything else than the center. Let's uh, check it out. Okay, uh, the attack was a lot less uh, audible uh, during this example because the stereo information has doesn't have kick and snare, and uh, there's quite you know just little stuff happening there that actually have a lot of transients. So exciting those transients, which are pretty much non-existent, um, didn't help much. But now when I played with the sustain knob, it was very, very obvious that, you know, the, uh, the um, stereo information inflated or just 
went further uh, hiding, you know, in the background. I'm going to leave this alone for now at the default uh, settings, not adding or, or subtracting neither the attack nor the uh, sustain. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the the last uh, control v2 instance and i'm gonna play with the stereo width and i'm gonna find the optimum uh stereo uh, width level for my uh, for this track let's go <music> like this uh, it's pretty wide pretty nice but I kind of sense the uh, some of the synthesizers just growing too big and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna open the uh, transient designer again I'm gonna go to the right uh, side of it which is controlling all the stereo information and I'm gonna cut back the sustain so what this is essentially doing is I'm leaving the uh, the um, the width, the stereo width, uh, pretty wide open here, and I'm gonna cut back the level of those synthesizers on the sustain of the transient designer. So I bring those synthesizers back to to a good to a good level, to a good balance uh, to the mix. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so uh, there we have it. Um, we were able to very quickly encode the signal from stereo to mid side, and then the signal left that first plugin went uh, entered this next plugin in um, in two channels, but the left channel taking care of only the mid information and the right channel taking care of uh, the uh, side information and I was able to process them differently separately what I did was actually decreasing the sustain only um, at the uh, the right or the stereo information and then I had to open another instance of the uh, BX control V2 so it could receive signal in mid side uh, format and exit the signal in stereo again so it's compatible to 
not only to the mix but to the world i hope this video uh showed you you know endless possibilities we can we can uh, do with uh, mid-side processing and another, another cool thing to note is that as i mentioned in the beginning of the video pretty much most uh, brainworks uh, plugins work natively in mid-side if you check out the zq here this is pretty pretty neat um it's a it's an eq that works in mono uh and in stereo that that is mid and side you don't have to do any of that encoding opening a different plugin you know it, it's it's an eq already that already works in mid side and like this you know um uh, brainworks has you know compressors that do mid side and and other other uh, beauties that you know make life quite easier when you want to you know uh, process things in mid side well i hope you uh you enjoy this um please like my channel if you enjoy this subscribe um the uh, the, the channel and uh hope to see you soon again and I wish you uh, great mixes, great masters. I'm Enrico De Pauli, and this is the Mix Secrets TV with the plugin tips. See you soon. Bye bye.